Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now today is Friday. Praise God. Hallelujah. I wonder how your week has been. It's been a blessing here. Praise God. And that's why I'm so excited to bring God's truth to you every day, Monday to Friday. Listen to me. Take this weekend and just get soaked in the word praise god i'm telling you the truth there is nothing like the word of god nothing nothing can be compared to it i mean nothing praise god and believe me when i say that nothing can be compared to the word of god so spend this weekend getting yourself in getting the word of god into your heart praise god can we call for our daily bread before we go and say father declare it with me father i demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We're talking about the character of a believer. I told you yesterday, patience, it's, it's one big character of believing. See? Now, why are we patient? You see, because it says, he that believes, I read, read, read in Isaiah 28 verse 16, he that believes will not act hastily. He will not act in a hurry. Why? Because he believes. Now the question is, what does he believe? See, he believes in Jesus Christ. Now what do you mean he believes in Jesus Christ? See, sometimes people confuse this thing. Say, what do you, I believe in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, I believe in Jesus. What do you really believe? Do you just believe in the existence of Jesus? Because James told us that even the devil believes and trembles. So the devil knows that he believes that there's Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? And he knows that oh, anytime he remembers come, oh, Jesus has come. So oh, that was our judgment to soon be here. Ah, nah, nah, nah. But the, that's what James meant when he says he believes and trembles. Now listen. When we say believe in Jesus, we are talking about believing in his personality, number one. Believing his word. Every word he uttered from his mouth. I believe they are true. And if they are true, then it is giving me a measure of experience. See? If what Jesus said is true, then that itself is giving me a measure of experience so I take the words Jesus have spoken now that's why I always advise God's children if you're using uh, I think even electronic Bibles do that now check the words in red see check the words in red take them if you have to underline them in your own Bible as you read and understand it underline it and like Jesus said this Yes, he did. I'm going to take everything he said for what it is. And I'm going to believe him. So now you see that the mindset. Why? I'll show you something. First Corinthians. Let me show you. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Watch this from verse 1. Verse 1 actually it says, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that, you re that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Now, there is what is called the grace of God. And the grace of God, here is on the book. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The grace of God is communicated through the word of God. See? Thank you, Holy Spirit. When he releases his word to you, grace is ministered to you. Now, what do I mean grace? Because, because it's not something physical that you see, ah, it is coming on me now. No. When he releases his word into your life, by command, by instruction, by counsel, 
when that word comes to you, there is grace that it comes with. Now, what does the grace do? Now, it's grace is a powerful thing. It's, I mean, it's powerful. Now, he says here that, that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. So, meaning grace is made available, but then you do nothing with it. You know what has happened? The word of God came to you. And then like, mm, mm, mm. Just like I'm sharing with you now. Someone is nodding his head and say, mm, wow, true, very true. But then you don't realize that as I'm speaking to you now and it's getting to your spirit, grace from the Lord Jesus Christ is coming to you. Now, what does that grace do? Well, I, I was talking to you, take the words of Jesus. As you're taking it in, grace is being ministered to you. What does the grace do? The grace empowers you to do that thing he has said and receive the result he said you will receive. I'll give you an example. Jesus said, Thank you, Jesus. Take no thought for your life. Say, what will I eat? Or clothes, what will I put on? Mm -hmm. Now, I stumble into that. It's written in red. So Jesus said this. And I look at it, take no thought. No thought. Thinking. No thought. I shouldn't think at all about this. About what I will eat. Or clothes, what I will put on. Now that, 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 that's covering. That, that means it, carries, it includes house. I should take no thought. Did Jesus mean that? Now what I do, you're meditating. Did Jesus mean that? I, uh, I should actually take no thought. I mean, no thought. So, how will I eat then if I don't think about it? And then I read further. Then I begin to understand because Jesus began to compare. You know, he says, consider the lilies. Consider the birds. Hmm. The birds think about what to eat. Now I'm getting the idea. See, now what's going on? I am beginning to experience something. Though I'm sitting down in one spot, but I'm beginning to experience something. My eyes are opening to something. See? Then he says, take no thought. Like, wow. Is that possible? But Jesus said, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a chance on this word. I believe Jesus said it and he wasn't mad. He wouldn't lie. So what? From today, I stop taking thoughts. Now why are you doing it? Because he said so. So you go before and say, Lord Jesus, I'm just finding out that you said I should take no thought for my life. No thought at all. But rather, that I should seek the kingdom. Oh, I see it now. I see it now. I should fill my mind with the thoughts of the kingdom. And when I do that, all these things I should have been taking thought of will be added to me. Okay, it's making sense now. Hmm. Is making sense. I see that this thing is making sense. Now, while you're doing all that, guess what's going on? Grace is being made, is being ministered to you. Grace is coming to you. And then, so how have I been taking thoughts? Oh, I see. I see. When when salary doesn't come on the day that it used to come I, i'm all worried and i'm shaking i see now, now you see you allow that word to dwell inside you now guess what's going to start happening 
Oh, but uh, the things you have to, you, you used to previously care about, the things you used to take thought about, will now begin to hit you on the face. You'll get a phone call. Eh, hey, this um, bill, remember you're supposed to pay it next week. Oh, hey, ah, now ah, wow, what's going on? Like, you don't remember, take no thought. Ah, mm, 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 mm. Lord, I love this part. First Peter tells us five from verse seven. He says, "Casting all your cares upon Him." <coughs> so I get this phone call. You're supposed to pay this bill. Thank you, sir. No problem. You hear from me. I, this one is greeting me on the face. This one is like, you know what, Lord? Is there anything you will have me do? <laughs> I'm telling you, is there anything you will have me do, Lord? Uh -oh, Father, they are calling me. Oh God, act. Oh God, do something. Oh God, guess what you're doing? You are taking thoughts. But you do that once and for all, casting. Father, you know what? I'm going to speak because because you already commanded me to take no thought. Now, what are we talking about? The character of believing. See? The character of believing. You have already commanded me that I should take no thought. So, I'm not going to put my mind to all these bills. I'm not going to put my mind to, not because I'm careless. No, Lord, because you are expected to take care of them. I cast the care of all these things over to you. The care of that, 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 that phone call I just received, Lord, and, and whatever the, 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 they are threatening you, I cast that care over to you. The care of this paper, this bill that is here, I cast it over to you. The care of this one that's supposed to happen tomorrow, I cast it all over to you. Dear Lord, just tell me what you want me to do. And so what will God tell you? Will he tell you to go and do one business? You see, whatever he tells you to do, whatever he tells you to do, that's the, you, you don't go, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to praise me for the next 30 minutes. Hey, Lord, praise is not the problem. You see, this money, I have to take care of, I have to pay this. I have to just, just give me an idea now. Give me, the Lord said, praise me for 30 minutes. Say, God, you know, praise is not a problem now. Let, just, just, no. The Lord said, praise me for 30 minutes. like, mm, okay, I will praise you. I praise you, I praise you. While you're praising the Lord, you're thinking, say, God, you're still taking thought over that thing. When he says, praise me for 30 minutes, you keep your focus on the Lord and praise him like there is no bill to pay. Praise him like there is nothing. Now, now sometimes you begin to praise him. He's your, he just said, praise me for 30 minutes. And you're here praising him and praising him and you're looking at the time and praising him and you're looking at the time. It's now 25 minutes, remaining 5 minutes. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You're just praising him, praising him. Oh, 28 minutes, 2 minutes more. I praise you, Lord. I praise you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I've obeyed you. I've obeyed your command. Oh, Lord, thank you. All right. Now, Lord, we have to pay that bill. Let's talk about that bill. <laughs> no. You missed the point. When, when you were praising him, guess what? You were expected to put your whole focus on him, not even the time. He didn't say after 30 minutes, if you continue, ah, you spoil everything. No, you just bless him, focus on him, and just praise him. And praise him and praise him until you are spent praising him. Now, if he actually said 30 minutes, you can actually shut your eyes and pray. Because I'll tell you something. If the Lord said, praise me for 30 minutes, you shut your eyes and begin to praise him. And energy from him is going to come into you. I'm now that's grace. And you will just go on and go on and go on. Then there is a certain time you will begin to realize that it's like I'm, I'm struggling now. It's like I'm, I'm praise. This praise is becoming my thing now. I bet you, you can look at the time and you realize you just passed 30 minutes. 
wow <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you what I've experienced praise God yeah because because that's how the Holy Spirit works and you are done with that guess what so so what do I do next after that go and sleep because the Lord gives blessings to his beloved in sleep our time is up praise God what a way to end the week listen to me I don't know the bill that is piled up waiting for you don't keep your mind on that bill that's the character of a belief of believing keep your mind on the Lord who will take care of that bill and all you should be looking at is Lord. Don't, don't look at him and be looking at the bill Lord no not the bill just take care of no keep your mind on knowing him oh, what would you have me do to me and when you say that you're not saying it God give me idea for business so I used to clear the bill you're still taking thoughts shut your mind Lord you know what push all these bills aside let's talk Jerry tell me what, 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 what's on your mind today the Lord is going to open a door by himself Guess what? Because he's pleased with you. I'll see you next week. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye.